Good morning, everybody. This is Alan Sherman, and this is the biweekly meeting of the UMBC Cyber Defense Lab, CDL. Um, today, it's our pleasure to have uh, my colleague, um, Mohammed Yunus, uh, talk about some of his recent work in healthcare and blockchain. I'd like to uh, remind everybody that uh, November 15th is the application deadline for um, submitting applications for uh, SFS cybersecurity scholarships at UMBC. It's a great deal, full tuition and a generous stipend and more for people who wish to uh, work for government. Uh, we are recording and we um, post our uh, videos on the U-Cyber web pages. Uh, thank you, Dr. Yunus. Thank you, Alan. Uh, thank you, Alan. I'm, I'm just uh, curious how to share the screen. So I just simply, uh, am I allowed or uh, you need to give me permission? It, because I don't you see- You have permission. Um, at the bottom, there's a, a share icon. Share. Okay, okay so I, will, I have to share. I can share the window. Okay. Okay, so I did share. I hope that you can see it. Yes. Yes, we can see. Very good. Okay. So uh, uh, let me get started. Uh, uh, thanks everyone for uh, uh, joining the talk. Uh, this uh, work is, uh, uh, you know, part of a, a research project that gets funded by uh, the National Science Foundation. Uh, it is an STT uh, STTP uh, project, which is. Uh, you know, as a joint work with uh, uh, local uh, uh, industry uh, in order to kind of build systems and you know uh, and, and you know bridge gap to uh, also usage uh, of the uh, developed technique into the industry or practice. So this is a type of a, of a grant. And also, I'd like before I start to acknowledge uh, my collaborators. You know, uh, they are listed here: Rosila, Nuruddin, and, and Lloyd, and uh, Muhammad Abdullah. Uh, the order is uh, reflecting the order of contribution as well. So we want to make sure that we know it as their uh, and acknowledge uh, help on this work. Uh, if um, if uh, you hear me well, then I will just uh, delve in. Uh, the, you know, as the title implies, this is more of a, a telehealth system. Before I talk about the telehealth, let me just uh, you know uh, provide a, a, you know an, uh, a background here or a definition of what is a body area. Uh, sensor network. This uh, this type of, uh, of a network actually evolved over the years from the general area of sensor network, uh, you know, where the miniaturized devices are being, you know, uh, uh, developed and deployed and aggregated in a network structure in order to uh, in, uh, in collect data and process it and you know do all sorts of applications, you know, particularly for you know uh, uh, in un um, uh, attended environment. Uh, so the this particular uh, uh, interest uh, evolved to order to cover you know the uh, human bodies and the uh, the uh, development of uh, you know miniaturized sensors you know and implants uh, it started to uh, grow you know particularly with the advances in microelectronics and you know MEMS technology and this actually uh, uh, made it to uh, all sort of uh, technology and sensing modalities and in fact even some of them actuation as well to close the loop. Uh, and the uh, idea, as uh, the um, you know the uh, cartoon here actually shows, is to get you know all you know um, a multiple modalities and collect all this from different sensors in the you know, you know attached or implanted in the human body, collect this uh, user wireless you know transmission and into a, a gateway uh, uh, node, which is like the big one here. Uh, let me just have the pointer. Uh, as a gate one here, a gate node here, and this one will having a bit more capabilities and connect this, you know, network uh, to uh, uh, remote uh, healthcare, you know, individuals. So this has become, you know, the uh, uh, the big picture, and you know, start, you know, started as a as a vision, and then nowadays it started to be realized. In fact, you know, the project we're working on, we are realizing, uh, you know, a, a body area system networks are going to be discussed. So as I mentioned, the this could could be just only for data collection, and also can be involving actuation, you know, and there are even devices like you know regulator now for the you know heart rate and so on. There are implants even in the human bodies that really does something in addition just to 
monitor. Uh, so the project uh, which uh, is actually geared for, you know, monitoring uh, uh, respiratory system, you know, and uh, this was, you know, uh, motivated by the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And uh, the idea what we try to achieve uh, in, in this project is to uh, build uh, a wearable, you know, in a shirt or a vest, as you see here in the picture. Uh, and, uh, you know, those, uh, populate, this shirt is populated with small sensors and uh, those is kind of like, a sensor enclosure, so the sensor inside, and they are, you know, they have, you know, this shirt will have pockets, and they are, you know, in, in bla you know, placed inside. So not all of them, maybe some or all, this part of the research, in order to, uh, uh, you know, collect, you know, some data, and we are focusing mostly on acoustic data, which is hearing the sound of the heart and sound, particularly of the breathing, coughs, and try to do processing of of this data in order to track the symptoms, you know, of individuals. Uh, this particular telehealth system is started to be, you know, very attractive uh, solution, you know, with the pandemic, you know, don't want to be able to mix social distance, you know, and at least to be, you know, uh, done remotely. At the same time, you don't want it to diminish the uh, 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 monitoring you know, quality for the individuals that are, you know, uh, uh, affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so the uh, the idea is to uh, collect those data and process it, and uh, you know, in order to uh, to detect anomalies and you know, and, and track this as well in order to see you know what the condition of the patient. So we this particular you know devices are connected with Zigbee you know uh, through a gateway uh, similar to what we had in the previous slide. Uh, the company we're working on is called uh, Lazarus, you know, and the you know, uh, it is actually owned by uh, uh, Lloyd uh, Mukbai, whom I acknowledged in the beginning. Uh, so the, uh, you know, if you look at big picture, the integrated, you know, uh, system is you have individuals that can be at home or you know, outside, you want to connect the body area network through the internet, you know, remotely to medical, you know, professionals. This is, could be one or multiple and, and if, uh, medical professionals here could be, you know, health, you know, uh, health care facility, look, you know, look in primary care physician, and it could also be, you know, uh, 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 in, uh, individuals who uh, uh, in, have interest, you know, in, in that from a research perspective as well. So the uh, idea is to uh, have this uh, done remotely uh, without getting the patient to be in the hospital, you know, there are lots of you know, advantage economically as well. You know, the insurance companies love it. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, the, with all of these advantages, especially during the pandemic time, here come the challenges. The first one that uh, is worthwhile to be looked at is the uh, feasibility of handling this. This is actually a stream data, so you cannot you know, uh, uh, you know, ensure from a timeliness point of view, you know, the latency could vary uh, on the network and you can get back at losses. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, with the miniaturized devices on the side of the uh, 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 implant or the side of the user, in this case, the one who are wearing those old sensors, the issue is uh, gonna be more complicated. So you need to ensure that the data is available you know, a bit on demand at the you know the rate of consumption of the different care, you know care facilities and in fact even some of the you know studies like to see tracking those changes over time rather than just on this continuously so this is actually affecting the architecture as we need to see and the second issue is uh, access control obviously there are you know you know not everyone wanted everybody to be aware of the body conditions are definitely privacy issues here as we going to see and also you know, uh, in, it is access control here also comes from an economic point of view because, you know, this you know, healthcare facility will be charging the insurance company and also the, those physicians will be, you know, more or less service uh, providers that, require, you know, that will be involved in billing, you know, and charges. As the other uh, uh, things that are from a security perspective, you know, well, you know, how to ensure the, you know, confidentiality of this data, you know, and, uh, you know, who is actually is watching this. Uh, and how to ensure the integrity you know, of those data as well as being transmitted well and and the you know sustain the privacy of the individual you know don't want this data to be published on the net and associated with individual you know uh, you know with his knowledge so the in order to uh, tackle all those challenges you know uh, we first we started to uh, you know think of a solution and before we delve into the solution was you know 
you know, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, so we provided here a summary of what actually is a problem that we try to tackle and the aims we want to achieve in this system. So it's more or less capturing what I just discussed. So what is the system that we, you know, you know, propose to deal with data sharing, you know, between the patient and the multiple individuals, you know, wanted to have flexibility, you know, because, you know, the, in, in this uh, new user, the patient should be, uh, you know, you know, able to determine who has the permission and who doesn't. And if you want to change physician, for example, or the skills, you know, uh, service providers, you know, hospital, then obviously you should should be giving this opportunity. And also, system should be dependable. You know, to allow you know uh, multiple access. You know, with you know uh, uh, to the data in a robust way, uh, and uh, it allow multiple users. You know, uh, uh, into in many healthcare you know uh, providers to access the data at different time. And it should be scalable for the large population because we don't want to only to serve one individual. Obviously, this is a trend, and we, you know, and we expect this health to be really uh, predominant, you know, in the near future. Particularly with the COVID nineteen pandemic, it changes the culture significantly, and you know, and the also the impact on the healthcare providers, particularly with from the you know the uh, uh, pandemic and how we get sick themselves. Uh, that actually created uh, you know a sense of if you don't really need to go to the hospital or the you know or the clinic you you know you don't have to and you try to get this other remote so the challenge is well you know for all of this well in, in this is in very voluminous data you know coming from not only one sensor it could be a multiple sensor their individual and then on a large scale on many individuals as well you know so we want to make sure you know the privacy of those individuals are being sustained you know we give them you know, uh, privilege to determine who has and who does not have, and you know, revoke uh, access permission and you know, uh, 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 in assign access permission to their data. Uh, and uh, uh, in addition to all of this, we the conventional you know security goals. You know, uh, particularly with this all of this in place, there can be still attack. You know, one could be eavesdropping on the transmission. You know, you know, or reaching the storage. You know, of, of the data. You know, identity theft. You know, to you know, do any fraud with insurance and so on. So we wanna, you know, also uh, achieve those security goals. You know, counter all those attacks. You know, uh, along the way. So uh, uh, the solution that we came up with in order to tackle this, this is actually system architecture, and the picture here actually capture it all. You know, uh, uh, we wanted the system first to uh, uh, allow for, you know. Storage the data, and this, you know, for data streaming, this is really essential from buffering. And uh, also, if you want to, you know, the physicians might need to track things over time, so you need to have a way to uh, store this data for access that is more or less an asynchronous in nature. And also, even if it's synchronous, you know, you want to to, uh, not to make it insensitive to the latency on the network. So the uh, uh, so we we you know decided to have a, a cloud in uh, using the cloud here and we call it here the cloud server you know in this particular uh, uh, picture here uh, all the data on the cloud server will be you know uh, will be stored in an encrypted format as we're going to be uh, uh, elaborating a bit more uh, and the uh, access uh, control uh, is actually is, you know will be handled by a blockchain network and we're going to be discussing this and justifying why this so the authentication you know and authorization will be practically handled by the blockchain particularly with the smart contract you know uh, features uh, the patient will be uh, interacting with the cloud server you know for you know data uh, transmission you know data collection here and will be an authentication to ensure you know who is sending the data and uh, and and also how to store the data you know the system and management, you know, of access uh, uh, will be handed again with the blockchain. The blockchain also will be, uh, you know, doing the same also for caregivers. You know, uh, ensuring that you know the caregiver, if they need access to the data, that they are authorized and authenticated. You know, uh, uh, their identity ensured uh, before the uh, cloud actually uh, 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 go ahead and provide this data. And at the end, also the blockchain is used for session. So I'm going to elaborate a bit uh, more on that. The, the key thing here we wanted to mention is that we kind of like try to split to split the responsibility of the you know or decouple the data storage from the 
authentication and prohibition aspect of things for also to make sure that uh, 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 the uh, in the it is robust in a sense. You know, we don't want it. You know, one to be a single point of failure. Uh, and uh, Ryan also will be talking about uh, blockchain a bit more uh, in the next slide. So we, I hope I kind of like clarify this a bit more. So the approach, we call it uh, blockchain enabled, you know, uh, data uh, uh, access, you know, uh, uh, control and the blockchain here, you know, uh, is, is clear as part of architecture. And we, the rest of the name will be clear because we're going to be using also you know, data-driven uh, mechanism to protect the uh, and integrity and the confidentiality of the uh, patient data. So the, uh, uh, so what is the uh, blockchain is actually providing here? So the blockchain uh, here is, uh, we are not storing data on the blockchain, which is obviously uh, uh, in, 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 in important because the blockchain, you know, will be can be also a bottleneck if you have to replicate, and also will be some privacy issues as well because this replication on multiple nodes. So the the role of a blockchain here we are using is just to make sure that we have a robust uh, mechanism to do uh, session logging, you know, and, uh, uh, and you know, and this is actually needed for us because we're gonna use the previous session information to uh, authenticate the or start a new session. And the second thing that we wanted the blockchain to hear uh, to handle is particularly to provide the you know uh, or customize the authentication and authorization process to what the patient actually wants. So in a sense, we are using the smart contract here to more or less allow prescription in a robust way of what the user want. Uh, you know, uh, uh, and give the user, which is a patient here, the uh, control to define control who access and who does not. So that is actually the two things here. We we consider this to be more or less transactions, and uh, you know, blockchain actually you know is good in in kind of sustaining the integrity of this. So this would be you know a way to uh, to uh, uh, track any uh, 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 track what access in the past as well. So if the insurance company could be uh, using those session logs and all the for accounting and dealing with dispute, you know, also it could be, you know, and, you know, and have detecting frauds. And also it allows the uh, user to, to, uh, uh, to, to have access to, uh, you know, or to know who actually access the data from a privacy point of view and who does not in case of any problem happening in the future. And also this provide a robustness to, uh, a robustness to the system because practically we are, you know, ensuring the authentication process, uh, you know, uh, with through the redundancy that really blockchain actually, you know, uh, 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 implement, you know, as part of the restructure. So the uh, uh, approach with uh, our approach, we call it Bidash here, which is kind of like annotation. And the, you know, the I found also from uh, the literature that the B, the the verb Bidash here will mean ruin, which is, fits nicely that it's more or less ruining uh, the attempts on attack. And uh, it fits nicely the acronym that uh, uh, for the approach. Uh, the, the, you know, the what blockchain to be used here uh, in 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 our system? It could be you know you know either private, uh, public or a consortium about uh, blockchain. You know, we as we're going to see later on as the result that we uh, prefer to or recommend uh, the consortium or private blockchain because the latency uh, of public blockchain will be uh, significant. You know, we by decoupling also uh, the role, you know, uh, you know, from the data access. So once the blockchain actually, you know, uh, play a role in the beginning of a start of the session and afterwards is actually not involved. And this actually will prevent latency, you know, uh, of the blockchain. And, 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 and it does not have much of a role afterwards because it become more or less deep streamed. Uh, now uh, we will get to, uh, you know, going back here, the you know, we'll get uh, next to talk about the interaction between the different components here. And uh, I will start with the uh, uh, data transmission protocol and the, in, which is practically this applies, you know, if the uh, patient is sending data to the cloud or the cloud is responding to a request to a caregiver and providing the data for a certain patient. So the uh, transmission protocol, what we are, uh, we, 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 you know, 
what we are ensuring here is that you know from the confidentiality we are not deprive anyone from eavesdropping you know even if it's an internal you know former user of the system from breaking the security provision and uh, intercepting you know uh, traffic and you know decoding and finding out what is the data is being sent uh, so this is actually a, a goal uh, here uh, uh, so the uh, uh, the idea of well, what you are using is uh, is is try to make this to be uh, as robust as possible by not only involving the identity of the uh, participating or the communicating party, uh, but also we consider the data that's being transmitted. So it become more or less biometric, you know, for uh, for the individual, uh, in a biometric uh, more of a security provision that really factor in the individual and their data uh, as well. We will be I will be discussing a bit more on how uh, the, the this particular mechanism work when particularly we are using. Uh, uh, LSTM, you know, it, uh, in, uh, for, for that, which is like a uh, deep uh, network uh, model. And the idea is to uh, uh, apply, uh, uh, you know, uh, use the previous mu samples, you know, uh, uh, in, you know in, in, to feed it into the LSTM in order to do a prediction. And coming with this prediction is more of a prediction for the next sample, but this particular prediction is not really. Uh, of uh, interest here, other than using is as a as a means of a generation of a, an agreed upon or subset that's consistent among the communicating parties based on the same input of data, and uh, in order to ensure that the that the practice they were actually the right people or the right communicating parties, in addition to other things. So once the 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 the, the, the next sample is predicted, which is in you know assume this is a value. This predicted sample will be used to, uh, uh, in a, along with the ID for the nodes, uh, in or, uh, uh, and in a, in a random number are going to be explaining in order to uh, generate a crypto key. This crypto key will be used to uh, encrypt the data, uh, which is actual data, not the predicted one. And we put it in a packet payload. This packet payload will be also including a sequence number. This sequence number will be using, you know, uh, later on to to ensure that there is no replay attack. Uh, and also ensuring synchron synchronization among the communicating party. Uh, then the packet will be sent, and when it's received on the cloud agent, either from a patient to cloud agent, then uh, they would be again, you know, uh, uh, decoded, you know, the packet and the, you know, you know, the data will be generated, you know, the payload will be getting there. Uh, now the cloud agent knows the previous, you know, new samples because they were received before. And you will really apply this LSTM to get a prediction, and then this value of this prediction becoming you regenerate the key, and once you get the key, you can actually decode the packet payload, and you know store the value. Now the, the patient data when being sent, we are not the patient is not providing the data; is actually providing an encrypted version of the data. So in a sense, the data is encrypted is actually encrypted with a patient specific data and is stored on the cloud encrypted format. So the cloud does not even know the data. And in fact, as you know, going to explain, the data is not going to be possible to be revealed for the cloud itself, let alone, uh, you know, to anyone who's eavesdropping. You know, the, uh, uh, in, uh, we will talk about the authentication uh, uh, from here, but the one thing I want you to know is that this particular protocol is not involving the blockchain as well as well as, at all. So from that perspective, the latency, you know, uh, will be uh, the least, you know, it's probably will be driven by the you know, cloud resources and uh, which should be, you know, high and the uh, communication network and here, which is probably the best you can do, you know, uh, uh, if you have a telehealth system, because, you know, uh, you at least, you know, how to provision, uh, uh, you know, enough bandwidth for the link in order to be uh, uh, meeting the, you know, timeliness requirement if needed. One thing that I wanted to uh, emphasize here is that, uh, you know, uh, the communication protocol uh, should be providing, uh, you know, a, a mechanism like acknowledgement and so on in order to ensure delivery, which is conventional in many of the communication protocol. We, you know, uh, uh, in, in a sense, if a packet is transmitted from patient, then the patient is expected or the system, the patient or the system or the patient will be expecting to be acknowledged, you know, that the packet was received. You know, in order to make sure that they are synchronized from that perspective, and this feature is almost standard in most of the communication protocol. So, from that perspective, our system is, you know, you assuming this underlying feature, which is always uh, uh, provided. 
Uh, I will uh, uh, get to, and I'll come back to this here. I'm going to be focused a bit more on, on this uh, LCM. So uh, uh, the, the, this is something we used in other uh, uh, contexts as well, uh, is to, uh, to do a prediction of measurements. And the, uh, you know, the idea is, uh, you know, apply uh, uh, recurrent neural networks, which are deep network, uh, that very, uh, in particular, LSTM, which is one type, is, is good in looking for, uh, you know, dependence amongst the, uh, the data samples or the data being fit in over time. And the it, it actually the abbreviation is long short term memory, which is simply try to get some of the previous you know data or input and factor that in in order to uh, uh, build the model. And here we are using to build the model to predict what's going to be the next value, as if we are kind of like doing curve fitting, you know, uh, you know, in order to extrapolate, you know, what's going to be next value. You know, that is actually in essence, uh, uh, but the we use this particular idea in a different context, a different paper that we publish in order to save energy. In a sense, you know, we could use that to skip transmissions. But in, in this particular work, we are using it as a security provision, uh, 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 a security primitive for us, because we wanted the, the, if the two communicating parties have the same uh, data, you know, over time, because you have been communicating, you could apply this uh, LSTM uh, uh, to ensure that they, you know, they come up with the same answer to the same, you know, uh, 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 question that based on this question, they can have come up with a, you know, generate the same key. So anyone who is intercepting this, you know, obviously will not be able to detect that at all because it doesn't actually have this LCM in it uh, uh, as well. So the training, this is going to be done and now. Uh, you know, obviously the beginning, but can be used, you know, uh, afterwards uh, uh, as part of the communication protocol. Uh, the good thing about the LCM as well, it is, uh, it is by, by nature is nonlinear. You know, if you look at it from a mathematical point of view, it's going to be difficult to reverse engineer as well. So you cannot really, you know, build a table, you know, based in, and then start to build up in a function from it. It is definitely going to be very difficult uh, to do so. Uh, so from a security point of view, this is good. Uh, one thing that I wanted to note here that's very important is uh, that's why I changed the semantic. If we apply LCM with samples and we can predict the new samples, you know, uh, from that perspective, but this uh, new sample, uh, uh, if you can take it from a medical point of view, you could probably, if you have, you know, some reading, then you can predict what's going to be the next reading. Uh, but in our context here, uh, we wanted, uh, we don't have the data in a sense. You know, uh, she, you know, shared, uh, you know, we are sharing the encrypted version of the data. So the patient is sending the encrypted data and the, you know, cloud will be getting or decrypting in order to get the encrypted version of the data to store it. So in a sense, it will be key for the data as well. So we are not really feeding the LSTM here with sensor samples. We are feeding it with the encrypted version of the sensor sample. So uh, semantically, we are not really generating an, you know, as you know, an encrypted version of the sample. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, at the end, you know, uh, in order to do so, we could have used, you know, uh, homomorphic encryption, or we make this to be more uh, of an LCM based on homomorphic encryption. It's going to be very complicated. You know, there are some work on uh, encrypted, you know, uh, uh, machine learning, uh, but it is definitely something we did not wanted to, uh, uh, you know, pursue because of the complexity. Uh, uh, and, uh, so uh, I, uh, and I would, uh, I would, uh, you know, recommend if uh, there is a question, you know, go ahead and interrupt me. I have a difficulty seeing the uh, comment while I'm presenting. It's difficult. It just pops up and disappear quickly before I notice and read it. So if you have something, you know, I don't mind if you want to ask, no harm. So the uh, 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 the uh, uh, value here will be practically an encrypted version of the the sample, which probably is not meaningful from a healthcare from point of view, but for us it means uh, a lot because this is going to be consistent uh, uh, among the two sides. You know, obviously requiring synchronization between the two parties, and if you recall from the communication protocol we had before, you know, if we have a communication protocol that is ensuring delivery. Uh, then we can, you know, ensure that they are uh, synchronized, and then they could come up with the same value. 
this value is used uh, in the key generation, but not only uh, this value. You know, obviously, uh, uh, in, in the number of samples that we consider here, the value of mu uh, can be influential. You know, if we increase this mu, obviously, it will be the function. We have more input and it becomes difficult, you know, more difficult for anyone to reverse engineer. Uh, so the, it becomes more, you know, robust. But at the same time, the complexity of this LCM will grow significantly. So it's becoming a trade-off here. And we're going to be at the end, uh, uh, we show some experiment and we kind of like uh, come up with, uh, you know, uh, a recommendation for the value uh, uh, of you. Uh, the, before I talk about the, uh, uh, how we can the, the keys, you know, the key management, uh, you know, uh, aspect here, we are using uh, symmetric keys for the, you know, for the data storage and for the data communication. The only asymmetric keys that we need is the, you know, bare private and uh, public keys. Uh, we use this two for every entity, patient, cloud, and also for the uh, users. Uh, we use that in, you know, uh, for the blockchain at the time of authentication, but they are not used afterwards. So that, you know, allow us to have a more of a lightweight uh, mechanism here, and this will be, cons you know, uh, consistent with the goal of having you know, handling the, uh, uh, you know, clean data, you don't want it to have a hefty communication protocol and encryption. And uh, the, also the gateway on the, you know, on the, uh, you know, wearable on the, uh, 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 of the user or the patient in this case, in it, in, they might have more capabilities than a sensor, but we don't want it to, you know, overestimate the, uh, or actually over, you know, require the capabilities of those gateway nodes. So the, Symmetric encryption is being uh, you know, promoted by us uh, uh, in this work. So the key we use for storing the data, you know, we call it like key storage key, and this key here for patients. So they vary their patients, and they are picked by, by, by the patient. So the cloud in that hosts this data will not be able to know what is being stored. Uh, the storage key will be maintained by you now uh, the patient and will be shared with between the patient and the caregiver. As a part of the agreement, in a sense, you know, if you, if you, you know, big uh, that and part of the agreement, then well, this is a protocol uh, that being applied, and this is actually the key in order to retrieve the data. Now, sharing this key obviously can be done uh, by the patient uh, with no problem, you know, or nothing to be involved, you know, affecting the uh, cloud itself. It can be affecting some of the users of the data, especially with our some history here. So the changes. Uh, that will be applied. It has to be coordinated, you know, with the caregiver. Otherwise, you will not be able to retrieve the data from that perspective. It, uh, the uh, uh, we refer to ESM, which is the encrypted version of the sample that we just mentioned the previous one, and we use KM uh, uh, D, which is this is a data, uh, uh, you know, key for sample M, which is reflecting what is the payload of the backend in this case. So how to generate this key? Uh, we, uh, we 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 are in, you know factoring in multiple factors here. I'm gonna justify you know each of them. So we use the LSTM to generate the estimate, not the the you know the predicted value uh, in an encrypted form in a format, and we use that uh, you know uh, to capture the history. And this is a data driven aspect. We put the IDs of the patient uh, uh, as well in case of the patient side. Uh, and uh, we have a random number here generator. We use it uh, with uh, 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 with uh, to determine something we call a session, uh, you know, ident session identity. So the session identity is something we uh, uh, we added to ensure forward secrecy, particularly for anyone who used to be a caregiver that no longer a caregiver. That you know, when I prevent you know this particular individual from accessing the data, knowing the having the privilege of the you know. Of knowing the system, so the uh, the so the the session practically is a you know a seed that we you know provided to a random number generator, and this out out of out uh, outcome of that will be used as part of the you know uh, input to a hash function to determine the packet key. So this packet key can be changing obviously bare packet as long as you know the patient identity will not change and this will not change the session share uh, key will not be changing. Uh, uh, bare session, 
the part that really makes this a very is going to be the change in the data, and uh, uh, and uh, and so practically we are, you know, encrypting the data, you know, uh, encrypting every uh, in a packet by a key that change almost every packet, and this very strong. Uh, encryption, even if you want to supply crypto analysis, will not really uh, crypto analysis will not be having enough really uh, repetition here of the you know, of the use of the same key in order to uh, to benefit in a part of the analysis. Uh, the uh, uh, in, uh, primitives here we are we, we are using we we try to use the ally you know the simplest one. Uh, and we, uh, by factoring multiple things, we ensure, you know, increase the secrecy. In case of the caregiver, we factor in not only the, you know, caregiver, we factor in the patient ID as well, in order to make sure that the, you know, the keys, you know, are variable, you know, uh, among the different patients as well, uh, and ensure integrity. Uh, I think I covered everything here, so let's just move on and, uh, for the sake of time. Uh, and how to do authentication before we talk about the authentication process, uh, there are some primitives here. You know, we have the couple of smart contracts that we use. You know, the you know, initially the you know the uh, private public keys are being used to uh, uh, to generate an identifier, uh, uh, you know, crypto identifier, uh, which are like a blockchain address, uh, and we use that to uh, 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 you know to authenticate. Uh, and refer to uh, the you know uh, individuals that are uh, part of the system, and uh, we have two smart contracts here to be used. One of them uh, for authorization, and one of them for logging. So the authorization process will be in involving two things. You know, we ensure the ident identity of the individual. You know, with a blockchain address here, and we also ensure that the patient uh, give authorization to this particular individual who is caregiver to access the data. And so the, from that perspective, the patient will be providing input to this smart contract, you know, which is a number of um, uh, uh, samples to be used. Uh, and also uh, you could add uh, an authorized, you know, uh, caregiver, you know, based on the, you know, uh, public key, uh, key and uh, also can revoke, you know, the access permission and having this uh, smart contract dealing with that allows this to be adaptable and also provide mechanism for patient to add more if want to, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, if the, you know, if the patient, for example, wanted to have a, a more of a, a question, you know, a, a, a multiple question with matching answers, it could be uh, added, although this is not our system. Uh, the, for, for the uh, cloud agent will be, uh, uh, in, in, in addition, will be accessing the, the session uh, logging, uh, uh, a smart contract, which is a session log, uh, logging, will be simply uh, reporting uh, whatever is needed to document the session. You know that maybe timings is something that can be used for you know uh, billing and so on. Or uh, in addition to that, it would collect some information that we use it for you know starting or authenticating the users for the next or future sessions as well, uh, including the last dates that are being used in order to. Next time when we this the this caregiver wanted to use a system, you know at least will be matching uh, the cloud will be able to match the predictive value coming from the LCM uh, to uh, what was you know uh, 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 the conclusion or the samples that was used uh, or accessed the last session. Okay. Uh, So the uh, authentication process captured here in this particular uh, uh, diagram uh, in, uh, in a patient, uh, when one start, it will be uh, 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 practically sending the, you know, uh, uh, you know, if authentication information to the cloud, you know, this including the, you know, the predicted data sample encrypted format, identity, the seed of last session uh, that was using the, you know, uh, uh, the uh, random number generator. And now the cloud will be collecting this information and you know inquiring from the you know a smart contract based on the patient ID what was the last seed uh, being used and what was the last data samples that being accessed to the new samples and then the cloud will be applying the LCM you know here in order to see if this match what is predicted here and then uh, as part of the uh, authentication process. And if the seed matches, then identity is 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 uh, matching. Then in this case, the user will be authenticated. 
uh, as a patient. And the same in case of the caregiver, in addition to that, will, uh, you know, the caregiver need to be, you know, checked again is a list of authorized, you know, uh, caregivers that the patient actually added in order to ensure that, you know, indeed this caregiver, although is known to the system, but is a physician for this particular patient, not just, uh, you know, someone else. Uh, so the uh, uh, the protocol will, will be done in the beginning, obviously, and will be involved in the smart contract in, 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 in order to get this particular uh, data. And then uh, afterwards, the, the session will be starting and become data transmission as they explained. Uh, for the case of the session, in, at the end of the session, the again, the uh, cloud uh, uh, agent will be collecting the last data samples that are being transmitted and the you now then see it uh, for this session and then send it to the blockchain as transaction. This smart contract for the session logging will be logging this as uh, and, and along with maybe maybe other information required for billing uh, to uh, uh, the blockchain as a transaction. And then we can you know it can be retrieved in the future if there is a new session or maybe this is a query coming from insurance company and so on, which is not really you know our focus here. But this is could be also. Uh, applied uh, from that perspective. The good thing that we want to mention here is the blockchain does not, you know, have uh, store the data itself, and and even with those uh, logged information, you know, for the from the last samples being used, uh, then uh, uh, the uh, uh, the the this will be only for few samples at the end of the session. Now, one thing that here, you know, I, I believe uh, Ryan actually noticed, which I, I tried to fix before the lecture, is that this value should be e, uh, ECM, not P. So this is a typo here, you know, on my part. And uh, I, I fixed it, but the picture was not looking good. So I just left it and I thought to be corrected here. But this should be ECM, ESM, uh, uh, not P. No, you know, it's encrypted version, as I mentioned here is a text. So uh, we we kind of like uh, uh, validated the system, you know, in, in, you know, in, in, on two di you know uh, uh, dimension. One in case of in terms of uh, performance, and the other also based on the security. So for the security uh, uh, aspect, we had an informal analysis and more informal uh, formal analysis. So from the informal uh, analysis part, we we kind of analyzed well how uh, uh, in the keys that we are using how the uh, are unique because you know are they going to be repeated over time because we are claiming that this is very you know a bare packet almost and uh, they are data driven and that's why you become biometric uh, can but you know, are they going to be the same key so is you know are we more or less you know uh, uh, assuming something that doesn't exist so we we uh, uh, we did is analyze this and also we have also experiment to validate our, uh, our claim you know uh, you know you know practically what we are doing in, you know, in, in, when we are doing things, the key we are factoring things that, you know, unique uh, uh, to the users and also they ensure that they are, you know, uh, uh, variable in from the uh, perspective of the, of the if job, if you, in, in a sense. So, you know, the, when we factor in the uh, uh, seed, for example, if anyone who were part of the system before and uh, wanted, we know the previous, in, you know, the, we know the, uh, the session, it will not be able to, in the future, be able to get the new seed. And even if the, you know, can last session samples be, you know, uh, retrieved, it cannot really establish a new, you know, uh, it cannot really be doing if dropping on the new uh, uh, transmission uh, in this case. And we, uh, in case of the, uh, uh, among, from other different users, we are, practically involving the user ID here in addition to that. So it become more or less unique per user. So there's a variability across users and variability across backend for the same users because of the data and the, and the uh, driven nature of it. We did uh, an experiment uh, with that, you know, uh, we using uh, ECG data that from the literature, you know, which is actually real data is 24 hours from 10 patients. And uh, we applied, uh, you know, uh, you know, the process of key generation here, and we used the uh, leverage time, you know, uh, distance uh, 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 as a measure to to measure the similarity, which is a, a means uh, to uh, uh, to capture similarity between uh, strings by uh, you know counting the number of add, you know, removal and update 
in a string to match another string. So if you take it in the context uh, of, uh, of a binary, it might be cap uh, similar or at least some sense of uh, a Hamming distance. So the experiment uh, with that, we applied this across, the, you know, key, you know, back it for the same patient and across uh, different patients. And the, as here's the result was diagonal, meaning that the similarity is, you know, is zero in a sense. They are completely, you know, they are completely dissimilar. Uh, you know, kind of validating our uh, uh, assumption. And the, uh, we looked also at the performance uh, from a complexity point of view, the LSTM uh, is not lightweight and uh, it is definitely a concern. And also we wanted to see how the effect of mu on the complexity and the security, which is something that I mentioned earlier. So we did this uh, study looking at the, ch checking the LSTM accuracy in a sense, what is giving the input you know, if you increase, you know, the number of samples of the data from one to two to three to four and so on, how accurate, uh, what is the difference in the accuracy of the estimated value? And we found that the after three, the for this ECG data that we use, uh, the accuracy did not change, you know, in the predictions. In a sense, if you predict based on, on four, is similar to predicting based on three, so obviously, you know, there's no need to increase the complexity because the, the prediction is going to be the same. The only thing is that you'll be doing more processing. And the, you know, the increment in the, uh, in the processing aspect is significant, you know, from one, you know, to two to three. So obviously, if you stop at three, it will be better saving, you know, from that. This data is, is actually, the values here are captured if you are running this mechanism uh, on uh, uh, I7, you know, uh, DC. But we are not, uh, and using the time function from Python, which is, you know, can be affected by the operating system for others. So it's not really very lean measurement, but it's just simply serves as a purpose to compare the effect of mu on the complexity of the LCM. So the next slide, we, we actually did embedded assessment on the LCM complexity, and I'm going to report that here. We looked at the runtime complexity if we, you know, for both aspects, if you apply you know, you know, asymmetric crypto system, you know, compared to what we are doing for the, and also we looked at the implementation of the LCM on the Arduino uh, microcontroller. So the, uh, if we, uh, you know, we, for, to compare the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, complexity of the crypto system, we are compared with RCA and, and uh, electric uh, crypto system, and, uh, and this is kind of like based on the size of the key, and we applied this for 70 ECC records. And we compare the, you know, the run, you know, the uh, runtime, and we change the size of the, the volume of the data. Obviously, the scale is clearly, you know, uh, uh, in, uh, in the, the is significantly growing high, and the difference is very obvious. Uh, and which is kind of like uh, good news for our approach. It just simply become, you know, clearly scalable, and there's a good justification for the symmetric, you know, crypto system here. You know, especially if we we guard it against the other things that could be, you know, uh, 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 attacked. Uh, the other thing, you know, I think I'm showing here in this slide is the uh, uh, complexity of the implementation. So, uh, you know, how complex is to do the LCM? We implemented this uh, on, you know, Arduino, as I mentioned, and this is kind of like the values here, and we looked at the energy consumption and the measurement of the uh, of the time. We did that uh, using um, a profiling tool, you know, uh, by looking at the generated code and comparing uh, using the, you know, the published, you know, execution uh, cycle, number cycles, uh, very similar for those of you who took uh, computer architecture with me, uh, in order to uh, estimate the uh, uh, time and the uh, and the uh, energy consumption and uh, and obviously uh, the values were encouraging, uh, very consistent with uh, with the application. Uh, for the smart uh, contract, we did implementation on, you know, the two smart contracts we have here on two uh, 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 blockchain networks. One of them the, uh, is a uh, Ethereum, you know, public uh, network, and the other one uh, was a private uh, uh, network. Uh, uh, and the one of them is, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, uh, bri the uh, public network is uh, using the proof of work and the uh, private uh, one is using the proof of authority, which is going to be lighter weight. And the uh, time for uh, execution is measured 16 seconds 
for the public and about four for the private one. Obviously, you know, uh, uh, you know, the numbers implies that we uh, advocate better to go with the uh, private or consortium, and it fits nicely uh, for the healthcare industry. You know, uh, you know that you could uh, uh, have uh, a network that have subscribers. If you look at the insurance uh, business, there are lots of things that you could share. And, uh, and you know, you share many companies. You share the same providers, same healthcare facilities. So having uh, something like this might be, uh, 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 you know, uh, worthwhile. And uh, it's thinkable in a sense. Uh, I wanted uh, to make sure I be on time. So uh, uh, we also uh, did uh, analyze the how resilient is this to. Uh, uh, again, it's in if driver, you know, particularly if one is trying to uh, uh, access the data. And uh, uh, in, in practically, the crypto system when applying is is quite robust. It varies a lot. Uh, but uh, in, in we looked at the two scenarios. If it's an outsider, you know, the outsider will have a hell of a job to really, you know, uh, crack the system because there are lots of variability uh, involved with here, and uh, the only uh, scenarios that we came up with that really could be is that if the outsider is colluding with you know, an insider, which, you know, in this case, someone who is using the network. And you know, this scenario is, doesn't make sense because if a, if a caregiver is, you know, uh, uh, malicious, uh, uh, in this case, you don't really need to do the crypto, crack anything, you just simply have the data. You know, there is no point of actually going with all this complexity, you just simply share the data, which is a target. And uh, you know, uh, in assuming that the providers are trustworthy, you know, obviously you cannot really uh, 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 handle uh, 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 in the the individuals uh, from that perspective. But if it's an internal attacker, uh, it, this again, if one is not trustworthy, then there's nothing we can do. But if the the only internal attacker we can handle is if someone were part of the system actually and left. Or become, you know, the credential was revoked by the uh, patient. In this case, you want to make sure ensure forward secrecy and the the, uh, the seed we use for the generation of the session uh, key or identifier that actually you know uh, uh, provides safeguard for recent, you know, uh, recently revoked uh, 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 or in you know, healthcare uh, provider. But if one was a bit, you know, uh, you know, earlier, you know, in terms of time, obviously the data become unsynchronized and his, you know, the, the issue is gone, you know, uh, but if one is recent, might have a lot of things that are to be used like the data, for example, but, you know, if we have this new session here, we'll be preventing this uh, one from, you know, uh, intercepting the transmission and decoding it. Uh, also, we analyzed the uh, replay and impersonation in the attack. So the replay is guarded by you know a lot of things, including the data itself. And we are also including the sequence number, uh, uh, you know, uh, in order to make sure that the you know uh, 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 this could be a timestamp as well, that this could not be uh, a threat. And impersonation uh, uh, here have plenty of safeguarding uh, uh, to against impersonation. I, you know, the identity that they are not really sufficient, actually the biometric, which is the data here we are using, is uh, definitely will be making the uh, data itself, you know, the system completely associated with the individual that have the data or generate the data. So it is uh, uh, becoming very robust here uh, uh, against, uh, you know, impersonation. Uh, you want to also keep some time for a question. So, uh, last thing I wanted to mention uh, before we conclude is that we did um, a formal security analysis, uh, and this is done you know, using uh, a CISPA, which is like a, a, a tool uh, for you know uh, formal uh, uh, validation of the security of communication protocols. You know, someone you know uh, uh, you know uh, uh, put forward this tool. I forgot the names. You know, they are very famous. Uh, the uh, model, you know, the protocol using, you know, state machines, and they start to look at the you know, uh, security goals that will be specified by the users, and then, you know, verify if this actually security goal actually indeed achieved. And they have, you know, a part of it as a tool set. They have, you know, a, you know, a, a display, and then have an analyzer, backend analyzer, and have even a language to specify a protocol. Uh, so the uh, uh, we did uh, uh, you know use that to ensure that our protocol is 
is safe. And this is kind of like the screen capture here. And one of it I will know that is marked as safe, which is practically it has a categorization safe, unsafe, or inconclusive. And in our case, was was shown to be safe. And the you know there are additional you know hints here about the statistics and how you know the how you know about the operation of the tool itself. And uh, in the goals, uh, which is what we specified in our case, is we are you know, targeting two security goals: is the detection and the caregiver authentication. In, in, in goal and also the secrecy of the data as another goal. So to uh, conclude, uh, you know, uh, this work actually reported uh, what we claim to be a robust uh, telehealth system. You know, it allow you know uh, 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 data to be shared, you know, be, between a patient and a caregiver in a secure way. Uh, and also we uh, with uh, more of a good tracking. You know, you know, this tracking could be used for you know uh, you know. Uh, in, investigating any incident for breaches or also for insurance companies as well to you as you wanted to use billing and uh, uh, in the user is in charge on defining who have access so in a sense would give the user of the system control you know from that perspective uh, and blockchain actually facilitate that through uh, the smart contract uh, uh, you know uh, features uh, and the system is robust in terms of you know, communication, uh, in, uh, data confidentiality, and uh, and privacy. You know the data are not shared. You know except with the when the user actually gives the uh, storage key to the caregiver. The storage you know, itself, if there's a breach, the retriever of the data will be meaning nothing. Uh, I know unless this key is known. And the data transmission are based on biometric. And uh, they vary uh, over time, so even crypto analysis will be inefficient. So I wanted to note that the implementation of the Facebook code and the also the uh, the uh, smart contracts that I showed here are available. You know, we put them on uh, uh, GitHub, so you can you know can be downloaded. This paper is or this work is reported uh, in a recent paper of us. Actually, it was accepted earlier this year, and I the system show that. Uh, and you can actually, I think it's available online if you want to download, or you can contact me if you wanted to have a, a PDF uh, to read. So with that said, I would like to thank you for your attention and I welcome questions. I know that there are some came through the chat. You know, they, I want to say that the, the pop up here very small and I could not actually read them as quickly uh, as possible. So if you have uh, any questions, please uh, go ahead and ask. Thank you very much. Um, what protection is provided, if any, for metadata? Uh, when when you're referring here to metadata, you are referring to what we are storing on the blockchain. Uh, who's communicating with whom? At what time? The type of uh, the external type of the data, the size of the data, for example. Well, uh, uh, this actually uh, is uh, those statistics are part of the session logging and the block is the uh, cloud is providing this to the blockchain through the contract smart contract in order to save this data some of these data are being used you know for the application you know for bidding and so on or if you want to uh, for investigation of incident and some of those data are being used by us for authentication of the users for the next session so this communication between the cloud and the blockchain you know, uh, in, 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 in the interaction between the cloud and the blockchain could be, you know, is in, is they will be encrypted with an asymmetric uh, uh, key for the, you know, that associated with the cloud and the blockchain respectively. Ryan, I know that you have been asking questions during the presentation. I, I, I hope I, Quote some of them, but you know, if you have anything, just go ahead and ask. Thank you for your uh, thank you for your responses. Uh, unfortunately, I was. I double booked. I was on a work call. Um, can you just retouch on on why blockchain? What, what are the big what are the big points? Sorry, I missed it. I can review the recording if that's 
No, the, the, yeah, the, the, yeah, the, 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 the blockchain here is considered considered to be an enabler for in the robust authentication in a sense. It just simply try to log the data that we are using from last session uh, to authenticate the user again for the next session in the future if it happens. Uh, uh, so we uh, uh, and the key thing that we like about the blockchain here, you know, obviously the transactions that you know about the sessions are secure, you know, and, and robust in terms of, you know, failure and it can be tracked. But in addition, things that we like is particularly the smart contract features here, because this allows us to customize the access process to what the user, the patient here, like to include. Uh, so uh, as a powerful feature in the proposed system here is that we, you know, al al allow individuals, patients here to be in charge on determining who access and how the access and what type of you know security provision that is required, you know, from that you know uh, for, uh, in accessing you know his or her data, uh, and, and this actually enabled you know significantly by you know the engagement of blockchain. Oh, great! Oh. Thank you. I'd, I'd be yeah. interested to know in general who, what's the incentive for people mining these transactions to the blockchain, but. I guess that can be another discussion, and we're over time. So, thank you for your uh, comments. Sure, well, thank you, um, Dr. Yunus. Um, sure. In you. two weeks, uh, David Sham and Bart Purnell are going to talk about the new Vodex Internet voting system, and there's several people from UMBC on that design team. See you in two weeks. Okay. Thank you.